Hello and welcome. I am Naya, and today I am excited to share with you another captivating story written by Nicholas Leonard. Nicholas is a writer from Massachusetts. He writes general fiction with Gothic and Romantic aspects. He writes poetry too and is the author of 154 sonnets. You can find those poems and sonnets over on his Instagram. Just check the link in the description below. And now, Apocalypse by Nicholas Leonard Read by Nayanomiku The end of the world was the last thing on Mindy Marsh's mind while James led her out onto the rocks at Nahan Beach in Lynn, Massachusetts. The couple looked like they listened to surfer rock. They seemed to have stepped out of the 1960s. They didn't dress like the stoners. They didn't dress like the emus. Mindy's brown hair was tiled in a kind of deflated beehive with a bun in the back. She wore a violet tank top with orange and pink flower petal patterns on it. James was a little tanner than Mindy. He wore jeans, a red shirt and a light blue jacket. Come on, I got you, James assured her, although there was a dismissive note to him. I won't let you slip. Something primal in them met the stinky smell of the sea with subconscious nostalgia. That's what may have made the pungence bearable. That salty smell, that fishy, sandy, stinky smell, was a former lover, standing up to object at a wedding in a marriage of oversaturated perfumes. A mother in a hijab was shepherding her children off of the rocks and back onto a walking path on the side of a busy street. The Boston skyline was far in the distance, the buildings, a kind of tears on paper blue. Mindy and James politely passed them. The little boy's black hair bounced while his mother moved monkishly behind him. He was in the victory of youth. She was in a pious way. And Mindy and James were in the current of love. So youth, family and a faraway religion moved reluctantly off the rocks to let Mindy and James walk onto the rocks like newlyweds walking into a new house. I picked the wrong day to wear sandals, Mindy shrieked with laughter. James held her. He guided her. That's all right. I got you. There was still a masculine dismissiveness in his voice, yet he held her. Just step on the dry spots. Don't step on the dark rocks. And don't let go of you, Mindy interrupted him. They stopped on the surface of one great large rock. He returned her smile with one of his, his dismissiveness being welded into a majestic sword right in front of her. That's right he said. They paused then with his arm around her lower back like a poorly fastened parachute. The waves crushed ahead on the rest of the discoordinated rocks and the couple inched a little further out onto the one great big rock. After dark, while you're reading, I'll sneak back down here and collect some mussels for dinner, James said to which Mindy gave a defeated chuckle. James, I'm pretty sure that's illegal. That's what you deserve, he insisted. He didn't tell her, but he saw a mussel in its black shell sleeping bag in one of the tide pools. With his arm still on her lower back, he put his other hand on her shoulder and said, Think of it. Spaghetti with tomato sauce and fresh mussels. 
Mindy's smile spoke for her. He was a good cook, and an even better thief. He was a petty thief, stealing flowers off of lawns for her. There was something about her that he liked when he lowered down a plate of food in front of her. Her eyes gleamed with gratitude, but it was more than that. Are you going to pick up some poor random snails too? Mindy asked. James paused and gave a teasing smirk. You want to try that? No, she laughed. I'm not serious. Huh, well, I'd try a snail. No, you wouldn't, Mindy laughed. Yes, as a matter of fact, I would, James said with a nod. He looked out at the ocean horizon, as if that's where the Boston skyline was actually meant to be. No, the empty ocean horizon was much better for James and Mindy. He took her and strapped her to his chest. His arms became a harness around her belly, and the two stood before the applauding waves. They stood there, and admired the ocean breeze misting on their faces. He admired the feeling of the weight of her belly beneath his interlocking wrists. How soft it was. How real she was. She admired the way he held her. His masculine dismissiveness wavering into clinginess. The day was too bright and sunny to welcome an asteroid. How dumb and lost it had spent its light year life, tumbling through the wine chimes of space and time, until the planet Earth happened to be in its trajectory. The misshapen boulder of a thing rolled. Jupiter was too far away to catch the asteroid, and Mars didn't have the voice to shout and warn the Earth. Gustav Holst was dead. Much like the popular music of the day, the asteroid had replaced what once was, and now was stream-rolling, creating bassy and meaningless drivel for the solar system to quiet in. Maybe some of the parts of the asteroid had a distant relation to the rocks of Nahand Beach. The one great rock that Mindy and James stood on had gotten white stripes and some kind of moss in its old age. But perhaps the asteroid and the beach is rock could have recognized each other last minute. Maybe when it was too late. The sky brightened. Blue turned to operating room white. Something muffled out the sun. Boston was right behind the beach, miles away. But that was nothing to an asteroid. What a beautiful city to deconstruct. What a perfect, inhabitable planet to ruin. What a species to annihilate. James and Mindy squinted, but the asteroid glowed. The ocean was just about to part beneath all the gravity that the asteroid was pushing down when the asteroid stopped. The asteroid, so James and Mindy, and the asteroid stopped. So far away to hear, it was just a barely audible poof. The asteroid disbanded with all that heat and kinetic energy waving out in an atomic orange light. Mindy gasped in awe. James reveled in his lover's awe. They watched the fiery light in the sky. It was as if a second sun had appeared and grew tentacles. The tentacles moved lazily like water, a fiery colored peach juice. Temporal watercolor spilling. James, what is that? Mindy asked. The sunset, he said, even though he knew that wasn't it. 
Oh, I think it's too early for the sunset, dear, she hushed. An orange glow came and went on their faces. The self-obliterating asteroid fell far away into the sea, its debris hidden behind the explosion of papaya light. The bending rays, which waved like tentacles, began to fade, becoming opaque. What once was the asteroid's path had left a tunnel in the atmosphere, and the tunnel glowed like a glowing peach. Every lint and fuzz on such a peach glowed. It made Minty smile. The sky became yellow. The spectral light disappeared and the sky was blue again. James, what was that? I think it was for us, he answered her. I hope you enjoyed today's story as much as I did. If so, like, share and leave your comment below. See you soon.